too far post from our viewpoint at the most impossible angle. Let's look at this again. Keegan got a little bit of luck here, but carried on. And tried to pull it back. It came off the face of the post and away. Brooking, it's open, and there's a line goal by Keegan! Fine flick, which the goalkeeper, I think, hardly saw. Look at this, Keegan, look at the pace of the run across the face of two defenders. The arc of the head and the real pace of the header. 17 minutes gone and Kevin Keegan gets his 10th goal for England. Arneson. Lervid made a good run forward. And here's Simonson. Referee looked closely, gave nothing. This is that he might have been obstructed for a moment. No one's given a marking job on him so far. That was Watson, and that's Keegan, and that's two. Both from free kicks taken by Brooking. Watson near side as we look. Nobody rose with him. Keegan unmarked, just finished it off going, driving forward. 22 minutes, and England well and truly in the driver's seat. Benny Nielsen is number 10. Siemenson takes it. Here's Nielsen. Benny Nielsen. Leavitt, that's a penalty. The referee had no doubt that time, but somewhat influenced perhaps by the earlier decision. Again, it's Philip Neal. And the challenge was very awkward and untidy from behind. Down went the Ajax fullback, and this time the referee pointed to the spot. Very well tucked into the corner. Goalkeeper went the correct way, and Seaman says, come on, let's go, or words to that effect. Good of the hip with the side of the foot. Pace beat the keeper, and the positioning. Here's Brooking, plenty of players forward, there's Nesbitt! Hit the keeper! Oh, I don't think knew too much about it. Oh, he's going on, he's got a good left peg, here's Anderson! It's a brilliant goal. A goal scorer in form, Frank Anderson. He scored five times out of six games for Ajax this season. He took that so well from Christensen, got through the crowd and poked it away extremely neatly. And all credit to the Danes for their comeback. Give it a go, and it really has paid for them. Oh, there's a real feeling of patriotism in the night air. Oh, they're in terrible trouble now. It's Christensen was offside. When Nielsen brought Watson, he was OK, but Christensen was offside. And Mickey Mills has been pushed up into the box, which is good to see. Kick by Fleming Nielsen. Barnes. Brooking. Keegan! And finally it goes in, and they appeal to the linesman, but Bob Latchford's goal will count. And I think the appeal was for handball, let's see. Barnes plays it wide, brooking the early cross. Keegan couldn't touch it, and what did it go in off? Well, it certainly looked to be around the elbow. Whistles from the crowd, but England back in front. Here's Carson Nielsen. It's a good positive run by Carson Nielsen. Really found a gap in the middle. Two players right, two players left. This is brooking, and this is Latchford. Man over far side is Wilkins, and he hits the crossbar, the angle of post and crossbar. Dane's in terrible trouble there, and there was so much room for Wilkins on the far side, and so much time for Latchford to cross. And here's Neil, back clearance by the keeper, and he paid to pay for it. Philip Neil with a really well struck shot. Ends the arguments about Latchford's goal. Look at the pace of that, the sting of it. And Jensen's bad throw out, thrown straight back past his face. Simonson was noted to shake his head then. Pulled the Danes back, but all to no avail in the finish. But here's Runfell! 
Well, that gives him his tenth goal. And for the second time, when England seemed to be home and dry, the Danes have caught them napping, lacking in concentration. Look at that. Look at the time he had. And he made it play. And... <laughs> Ce sont les Irlandais, cette fois-ci, qui attaquent par l'intermédiaire de Brady. Gibbons sur la gauche. Ryan. Et une balle que l'on laisse passer. Et qui peut être dégagée par la défense britannique. C'était une belle occasion pour les joueurs en vert. Brooking. Et regardez, tête de l'Axford, le meilleur buteur du championnat britannique, Holmes a essayé de sauver sur sa ligne, nous allons revoir ce but. 1 à 0 pour l'Angleterre, c'était la huitième minute de jeu. Nous allons revoir ce corner tiré par Brooking. La tête de l'Axford. Et le geste désespéré de Holmes, qui ne pourra rien. qui a peut-être d'ailleurs privé Kintz de ce ballon. Il n'est pas certain que le gardien n'ait pas pu repousser la défense. Et tir de Coppel sur la barre. Une des plus belles actions de cette partie. Vous avez ce tir très tendu de Coppel qui a heurté la barre transversale. Écouffrant dans ces cas-là. Le jeu est beaucoup plus libre. Et Guillaume de sa côté, bien placé pourtant, c'était l'occasion d'égalisation. Les Irlandais à nouveau l'assaut, mais une obstruction de M. Kigan lui-même, sanctionné par l'arbitre. Un coup franc de Brady, regardez bien. Brady pour son compère Deli, et le tir ne pardonne pas. C'était l'égalisation pour cette équipe irlandaise qui le méritait d'ailleurs, en particulier pour ces deux garçons, Deli et Brady, qui ont fait un travail extraordinaire en milieu de terrain. En l'absence de Giles, le meneur de jeu, et de Highway. Le revoici. Ce tir de Deli, sur lequel Temmins ne peut rien. Un partout. Pour leur plus grande joueur, sans doute. Du public de Lance dans le road alors que nous revoyons ce but, vu sur une autre caméra. Pour un autre. A pu dégager. Qui gagne en retrait, Coppel tire. Et Kings détourne. Un coup franc de Brooking. Neil. Brooking. Et qui gagne à côté a raté l'interception. Holmes a sauvé son équipe sur cette action. Brady. Excellent technicien. Givens. Et but de Ryan. Mais regardez bien la réaction. L'arbitre repousse le but pour la faute et regardez. Dans la phase préparatoire à la Coupe du Monde. Et ce résultat nous avait donné bien des soucis par la suite. En tout cas, mis dans l'obligation de battre la Bulgarie, ce que nous avions fait. a lazy pass out there by Brooking but it found eventually it found Barnes and away he goes Latchford outside him just on side and here's Koppel coming up quickly as well good break by England and uh, an interesting shot by Koppel but on that form certainly uh, Barnes looking in the mood fought it here by Tony Curry And O'Neill just nicking out the foot there, but Neil and Curry between them, making a bit of progress here. Phil Neal for England with the cross, and the header, superbly saved. My word, Coppel's header 
Look, the shout and the dance, a lot of goalkeepers it would have been. But Jennings' reactions, not for a moment, let him down. The cross by Neil. And look at that brilliant piece of keeping. Here's Phil Neal for England, played wide now for Coppel. Interesting cross towards the far post! Keegan! Well, the smile of Keegan, the cross of Coppel, Pat Jennings just beaten to the punch there by Kevin Keegan's head. Jackie? Well, that's exactly what we said what made happen. See, Chris Nichols aren't going to hit the far post, and Jimmy Nichols the one who's going to take the near post, and he's not a good marker in that area. It's going to be McElroy or Nelson. Three men in the wall. Popple, Brooking and Curry. Nelson running over it. And a curler! Oh, my word, it went against the post from McElroy. Trolled it and stuck it in the back of the net. It was a terrific chance because he had a lot of room there. And that's the half-time whistle. And it's a kick that's going straight to Cochrane. Oh, he shoved off the ball unceremoniously there was McCreary by Curry. Here's Peter Barnes doing the thing that Jack Carlton likes him to do. A lovely little flick, though, for Keegan. And a good cross by Keegan to the far side. And the hitter coming in! And it's there by Lutchford. Barnes, absolutely superb. But what a good piece of crossing by Keegan here. And they've got in a bit of a muddle there, the Irish. Between Pat Jennings and the post, just going off Pat's hand. And within a minute of the start of the second half, England have given themselves some breathing space. Jack. That was one of the best crosses I've ever seen because the ball was going away from Kevin. But Bob Latchford said that went exactly where Pat Jennings didn't want it to go, which was down at his feet and in by the near perfect. Well, here's Keegan again. That was perfect too for Brooking. A shot and just passed. The corner then, which Brooking will take. Watson's there. And another one. 3 nothing. The agony of Pat Jennings, beaten twice in the first four minutes of the second half. The swinging corner by Brooking again. There it is. And look at that big number five, Dave Watson. And they could only hit it into the roof of the net. 3-0. They're relying a lot here. They're relying a, a lot on, on Pat Jennings, and he's not getting to the ball. And there's no real competition from the big England players on these crosses. Do it. People don't, don't, don't seem to be closed down quite as quickly. Well, Armstrong wasn't closed down, and neither was Spence there as they take it up for Northern Ireland. My word, a uh, rocket shot there over the side netting. A short pass for McElroy. Here's Jimmy Nickel coming up. Terry Cochran on the far side, supported by Sammy Nelson. Still with Cochran, the short little pass there. They might come to something here yet. Derek Spence tries to go in there, and eventually, my word, it didn't go in, it was Armstrong shot, and then it bounced off the shoulder of Ray Clements, and McElroy couldn't quite turn it in. I think the, the quality of the England crosses have been what it should have been, but in this second half, the quality has been that much better. Probably runs told him to get the ball deep and get it get it to the far post. Corner coming in, Keegan's backward header! To Keegan really had to, small though he is, he had to stoop to make a backward header with that one. Brookings corner, Keegan stooping down, and Latchford from close range. Number four, Jack. Well, it just shows you see Jimmy Nichols out there again with him. And Jimmy Nichols doesn't really know how to handle this sort of situation with Keegan. Well, we had probably they were expecting a long deep England ball to play, they, they, they pulled a five card trick on them and played it short and sharp into the near post. And it was terrifically well worked. Keegan's run was lovely. Almost a chance for Derek Spence.
play getting bogged down rather in the middle of the field but that's uh, Watson with the long ball Ifkoff with the header Brooking saw his chance there and went all the way for the Brooking and Kevin Keegan scores for England a typical Brooking-Keegan combination how well it works and Ron Greenwood's entitled to smile Brooking made it possible, he took on the defence, pulled the ball back superbly, and Keegan, well, a player of his class, doesn't need asking twice in that situation. Just struck it low past Filipov, and Kevin Keegan. This is his 14th goal for England coming up. Watch Brooking take them on. Keegan's just behind. Here he is on the right foot, and it's driven low where the goalkeepers don't like them. And England take the lead here in Sofia through the European Footballer of the Year. To be taken again by Brooking. Oh, Watson up again, and that's gone in the net. Dave Watson got up at the far post, and England are two goals to nil in the lead. David Watson beat the goalkeeper beautifully, didn't he? He really got there first. Superb header. That's his third goal in international football. And they've all come this season, strangely enough. Well, that's a tremendous breathing space now for England. The second goal, so important. Here's Brooking. Koppel. Bones! Oh, it's three! Oh, he's taken the match over now. Look at Peter Bones. He's delighted. Steve Koppel's cross. And England have scored two in a minute. I think that should just about see off Bulgaria. First Watson and then Barnes. Watch the cross from Steve Koppel on the right. It's floated beautifully to the far post, actually. The goalkeeper commits himself. The defender is ball watching. And Barnes just comes in and heads number three. Bulgaria nil, England three. <laughs>
Francis coming away from the near post again and getting it to Watson. His first shot was blocked. And not unreasonably, he snatched at the second. Reeves a little bit further over. There's Watson on the corner of the picture. And here's Huddle. Teasing chip. from Dave Watson but look at this for a teasing chip from a man making his debut one nothing to England from the head of Watson Francis Huddle showing such confidence and that's Francis and that's a good save Huddle Woodcock left, Reeves right. There's Woodcock. Another good save by Harry Stop. Bulgarian goalkeeper having a good game. Reminiscent of Semenov here 11 years ago. It was a shot and it was flicked up. Could amount to a corner if uh, Samson's going to try a long throw, but he doesn't. Reeves, well stretched. Kennedy, Francis, Woodcock! And here's Wilkins. Goal kick. And Kennedy having to cover Basov. And they've got a man over at the back, and that was a point save! He's had nothing to do all night, and he really had to earn his keep then, Ray Clements. Shelley Ashkov who got up, and as the ball comes across, you might well see that there's a man over here, but it didn't come to him. Shelley Ashkov put a good header and a really good save by Ray Clements. Wilkins. Francis, and here's Huddle. showed in midweek for Tottenham against Manchester United. What a delight for Glenn Hoddle. And what confidence for that one. Spooned up with the side of the foot into the roof. Just look at it. And that one he hit first time. And the crowd pays its own tribute. done by Keegan, this is McDermott. Cunningham and George Depp, Keegan! <laughs> Kevin Keegan, the goal scorer. Keegan, wait for the chip! Oh! Thank you.